Early in my quilting career, I made a Lone Star wall quilt as a wedding gift. I almost didn't give the gift away as I was somewhat embarrassed that not all the seams met. After all, I'm sewing with Nancy, what would people think? Well, fast forward many years, and now I'm eager to show you the same quilt block, this time with a technique that's practically guaranteed to cause pride, not embarrassment. Why the change? I broke the rules, and I'd like to share my tips with you. So speedy Lone Star Quilts, that's what's next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the Clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. In a traditional Lone Star design, there are three main pieces, shapes. The diamond shape, there are eight shapes put together, and then a square in each corner. Then at the top of the diamond, there's a quarter square triangle or just a triangle shape. And the problem occurs, or occurred for me, when I made my first Lone Star was right in this intersection. It's called a Y seam, where one, two, three seams come together. And you can see it's shaped like a Y. And I say W-H-Y, Y seam it that way. Because, oh my goodness, I had problems. And I'll show you why. Here is the traditional way of making a Lone Star quilt block. This is a rather large one. Here's the square where I had eight diamonds. And this intersection is the tricky part. To work on this, you're always instructed to mark a fourth of an inch from the intersection seam. There's a little pink dot there. And when I stitched together the diamonds, I stopped stitching a fourth of an inch. There's a fourth of an inch that is left unsewn so that when this piece is sewn to the Y intersection, you have to align that little dot right in that intersection where you stop stitching. Sew from the dot to the edge, and then cumbersomely sew from the dot to the other edge. And for those of you who are very precise, you can get that smack on, but hmm, for some times, for me, it didn't happen so well. And often, the fabric stretches a little bit out of shape because there's a lot of bias edges and it's just not my favorite way of doing things. If you can do that, great, but if you'd like a little streamlined technique, we're going to sew all straight seams. And to do that, I had to cut, I'm cutting the square in half diagonally and doing the same thing with the triangle, cut it in half diagonally. So if you have a pattern at home, let me start with the triangle. Here's the shape of a triangle and you'd cut it in half but then you need a seam allowance added. So the seam allowance is added to the edge where the cut was made. In this other section, this is a little smaller pattern piece, but you can see here is the square that has been cut diagonally and then a seam allowance is added to the side. The diamond shape stays the same, so you still have one, two, three pieces, but not in the same configuration. You can also use templates that have already been designed that way, and I worked on those so that you didn't have to really make these changes. So here are the templates. You can make a variety of sizes, four different sizes from them. But again, you can use anything that you may have at home, just make the adjustment. It tells you how wide of a strip to cut for that particular piece. And for each of these, you're gonna do some tracing. And I've started to do this where I would place the template on the cut fabric. The fabric has been starched heavily or sprayed. You'd trace along the edge, rotate this, trace, just fill in the blanks so that you're filling all of the areas. And perhaps you can see the triangles that are in that area. For the diamonds, I have three fabrics 
stacked together. I'd use the diamond shape. And you make sure you're doing this accurately. I'm doing this kind of quickly here. But then you'd trace the edges. And then if this were flat, I'd slide it over, make sure it would be flat, and trace the next section. With your rotary cutter, ruler, and mat, you'll cut out each section. And I have a little ahead of the game here where I've cut along each line and I'm going to stack them. As you can see, stack them together. You're needing eight diamond shapes, eight large triangles, eight small triangles, and I have four in the stack right here, where I have the small, the diamond, and the large. And then you reverse the process with the remaining four. You have a mirror image where you have the large piece, the diamond, and the sm small triangle. So now we have mirror images of the groups. And you may wonder how this is going to come together. I'll do it at the sewing machine right now. I've set my machine for a straight stitch and have a fourth of an inch width of a presser foot on it. And you'll see that in a few minutes. Just a basic seaming technique that I'll be showing you. And now I'm going to review the shaping of the templates because you have a small triangle, a large diamond, and a large triangle. And on the templates, it happens to be printed A, B, and C, so you know how to line these up. On your other templates, you'll, you'll have to kind of organize them in this fashion. And you'll have four that you're going to be stitching in this configuration. So piece A is placed on piece B, and you match the points, which I have here. And at the end, there's a little fourth of an inch seam allowance that extends beyond the typical extension that's found on most quilt patterns. You may want to do a little pinning. If you starched or sprayed your fabric pieces, it will go so much easier. And then just stitch with a fourth of an inch seam allowance, aligning those edges. It's, even though we're just sewing with straight stitching, it's still important for accuracy because we have eight diamonds that have to meet in the middle. And that's almost why I never gave that wedding gift away that I made many years ago. So after doing the stitching, then we'll do some pressing. And we're going to press this seam away from the diamond shape. So take some time to press. And if you might want to check it off, just top press from the right side to make sure there isn't a tuck in the fabric. Then you're going to add the remaining triangle, the larger triangle to the section. And we'll have 1 8 of the Lone Star completed. This was block or triangle C. It's placed on the unit that you have here and we'll sew the straight seam. So you're going to be making eight in this configuration. As the template says, A, B, and C. And then the next thing I'll show you are the remaining four. Did I say eight? You're going to make four in this direction. And then you're going to make four in the opposite direction. So now I'm stitching this together. The edges are meeting. Just sew with about a 2.0. 2.5 millimeter stitch length and as I get at the end you'll see that there's that fourth of an inch that's extended on the template that's right where the seam ends. It's amazing how that works. And then you're going to do some more pressing. This time I'm going to press the seam away from the center. It seems to work better that way. And just press the seam. Use plenty of steam. And again, do some top pressing to make sure there isn't a tuck, which I did press right, one right in there. Now we have one eighth of this block complete, and then a little magic happens. Here's the seams A, B, and C have been sewn together. Four of them in this direction, and then you'll make four in the opposite direction, mirror image. You leave the diamond in the same shape, but you move one onto the other side and it's C, B, and A. So now, piece C goes on to piece B, and a seam is stitched. A goes on to B, and a seam is stitched. And I'm going to show you how this comes together. And this is the magic where I broke all the rules of this Lone Star quilt. 
but unless you're going to be entering your quilt in a big contest, I highly recommend it because it's so much faster than the traditional way of doing things. So here's the first piece that I stitched, the second piece that I just kind of walked you through, and then you meet right sides together, and aha, you stitch the long seam. No Y seams. How about that? And when you're done with that, you're going to press that seam open. I recommend pressing it open. And I have four smaller samples to share with you that you place together to make a block. And let me just flip these around a little bit to make the configuration look well. But I think you get the idea how this block goes together without any Y seams. No matter the quilt block, there are always design options. Case in point, the Nestled Stars quilt design, featuring a complete Lone Star block in the center. Partial blocks radiate from the center, which provide a dramatic image. This segment is on design. Design of this simple block that you may think only can be made in one way. Well, of course, what I just showed you creating the eight-pointed star in the center, this is a very big block. I think it's 24 inches, but the corners have cornerstone blocks with just a fourth of the block placed in that area. So you can use it as a dimension. It doesn't look like a Lone Star at this point. But mainly I want to show you the quilt, as you saw earlier, that's behind me, the Nestled Stars block, with a large star in the center. It's about 22 inches square, but then at each corner radiates out a portion of a, of a block, three-fourths of a Lone Star block, and that goes for every corner. This makes a square quilt. If I was going to make this into a rectangular bed quilt, I would simply add maybe some stars across the top that were of a different size. But this has a lot of drama, a lot of impact. It's kind of fun to work with. If you're wondering how this is designed, it's composed of 16 of these quarter blocks. And I'm going to work in small scale for you right now. And you can see the layout of the center block. That's really simple to work with. But then you lay it out by adding the pieces, adding three-fourths of the block at each corner. And you just lay them out, pointing the center of the blocks to the corner. So here's the corner, and the blocks point in this direction. You do have to lay it out completely, first of all, because that will help you when it comes time for doing the stitching. I think I'm going to put this over here. I have this, some of the same block colors together. And then I have two left. I'm going to do some mix and match here. We've got too much of the same one here. If you use eight different colors for the center of the diamonds, then mix them up a little bit. And you can see this nestled star configuration. So now to do the stitching, you'd lay out your blocks and then consider columns and rows. First we're going to sew together the columns. Meet blocks from column one to column two. Just match right sides together. Make sure your blocks are the same size. Measure them, square them up if needed, but if you stitch square, um, with straight seams, they should match just fine. <clears throat> and then you stitch down the seam, sewing these all together so they would be nicely matched. Then after you create column one and two, you go to three and four and overlap three onto four. And you do the same thing. Just sew down these two, these four, excuse me, pairs you can chain stitch them together. Then after these two sections have been sewn, then put one and two to three and four. You get the idea. What's left are the rows. Just meeting right sides together and sewing the rows. Take some time. And do remember that you must press, it works better, I should say, to press open the final seam of creating this block. Rather than pressing the seams to one side or the other for this center one, Everything will match in the middle using these techniques. So a designing technique using nestled stars. I rarely make the same quilt design twice. Case in point, the Lone Star Makeover. In this design, I tweak the number of fabric colors. 
I added sashing, turned the block on point, and then used portions of the quilt design rather than the full design in the corners. These are just a few of the ways that you can make over design, keeping the process fresh. So if we look at the quilt behind us, you'll see all these makeovers. And the first one is pretty obvious, and that is that there are four colors within each section. The small triangle and the bigger triangles, which now looks like a square, are not the same color. You can see the block has been put on point. It's been rotated by 45 degrees so that it has the tip at the top rather at, than at the corners. Sashing strips, small division strips, separate the blocks. And then when we go to the corner, a portion of the block is there, but this is kind of a tricky little corner that I'll show you some tricks of how they're put together. The beauty of it is that once you know how to create the block, it's the same process. And here's the block we made earlier, or a sample of the block we made earlier, where it has been all straight stitched. But when I lift this up, you'll see the same size block, but the different colorations and what a change that makes just by changing the backgrounds. And of course, the colors are brighter and there's a print involved. The block was put on point. So rather than having it square in the design, it's placed, rotated at 45 degrees. And you can see the change that it gives. And that's where you get a tumbler looking effect because of the color different change color variations. The sashing strips, about an inch and a half wide, and we'll give you the instructions in the booklet that accompanies the program, are stitched to each side of the block. And first we start off with two strips, we assemble the blocks, but you can kind of see how this separates things and gets it, gives it a division so you see this as a unit, not necessarily as a star or a lone star. The corner unit is really what I'd like to spend some time on because it took us a while to figure out. And you know, you know that I don't sew this all by myself. So I have worked together with my staff and we played around with these pieces and these are the smaller units, the smaller Lone Star units. And so I thought, okay, we're gonna use half of a block in the corner. Well, if you sew two blocks together, this is what you have and it's not on point, it's not square. So this is how we managed it. It's the same component pieces. The block was put on point, or it's going to fit in the corner. But then, rather than having the block complete, we moved the block, half of it, to each side of that middle square. And so that gives you that complete corner unit. Isn't that kind of fascinating, the play of the design? When I designed this quilt, I had the big center and I had the square in the middle, or the corners, I should say. And then I had to fill in this space. So that was just kind of a process of adding strips of fabric, add some leftovers of the polka dot and some of the other prints that I pieced together and added another sashing strip. It's just kind of design as you go, so you can get this pieces, the pieces to fit together. And as we look back to the quilt itself, you'll see that this is what happened when it was all sewn together. It filled in the blanks. So you have to do a little work and little planning, which we have done for you, but if you're doing this yourself, lay it out, make visual decisions visually when working with quilts as well as working with garments. So we're working with a Lone Star. Once you know the basic process, you can change the design, change the color, change the orientation, and have a lot of fun in the design and sewing process. What began as a trip to teach English to Cambodian students turned into a passion to provide wells, electricity, education, and women's rights to the people of that same country. Please welcome Pat Lyon, who is our guest on Sewing with Nancy, or Nancy's Corner, who uses her love of sewing to accomplish humanitarian goals. Pat, welcome to Sewing with Nancy. Thank you for having me. 
you told me in when we talked earlier that 14 years ago you you made your first trip to Cambodia and tell our viewers how it began and how it's evolved and the little sewing component we'll tell them about later too. Well, I received a brochure in the mail inviting me to teach English in South Korea. Mm -hmm. And I had already been to South Korea, so I could imagine myself doing that. And then I didn't hear back if I had been accepted to the program. Sure. So when I called, they said, well, we're expanding the program into Cambodia. And we think you should go there. <laughs> and uh, I prepared myself as best I could. I took a Laubach. Uh, second English, English for second language uh -huh. training class. And I took all the wrong things to Cambodia. My uh, clothing was too hot for the climate. And all I had was a ream of paper and some colored pencils and a Bible and some teaching books. And you began teaching English. I did, and I just loved it and was later joined by my friend, Deanna Shimko. And she loved it too. And then you started incorporating a little sewing into your teachings the following year, I think. Yes, I went with another friend, uh, Suzanne Wogan, and this is called a cloth book project. It's a literacy project where the pages of the books are made from old sheets, mm -hmm. and then you use a, a fusible bond <clears throat> to illustrate your story. And you made picture books. The Khmer people did the writing, uh -huh. and then they put the pictures that went along with their story. But then you were telling me about the lack of clean water and the lack of electricity, and you wanted to find a way to fund wells, electricity, and education. Yes, my friend uh, was very diligent in finding out how to get someone to dig wells. Mm -hmm. And she finally found someone who had worked with UNICEF who began to dig wells for us. And she puts on concerts to earn money for the wells. And then there was a little girl that had a dream in one of these storybooks. She mentioned how she wanted to be a doctor. Ah. And uh, we got the idea of maybe being able to put her through school. And that's how the scholarship program began. And the villagers and the people you taught started making purses. Yes, then we began to teach sewing in the Bakralang village. and. Uh, the first thing we made was really the tie purse, but this past year I made these strawberry purses from a pattern by fig tree quilt. Uh -huh. And I uh, changed it a little bit, added a pocket, and then uh, brought these back to sell to put money into the program. And you used your own fabric, and then you, the next, or the first year you said you started with ties. This is a, a man's tie that has been taken apart fully. Yes, uh, people <laughs> donated ties to me, and uh, this past year when I went, I took 200 kits made from ties, a fat quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, old sheet is the base of the quilt, and then it's rather like a uh, quilt. It's rather like quilting that you cover the pieces of the base with the tie. Sure. When it's all opened up, there's enough fabric to do that. And here's a picture of some of the people that have been, the, the children that have sewn the ties. They're beautiful, just beautiful. And this yes. is where? That was in Siem Reap at the Teacher's Preparatory School. And uh, I taught over 135 tie <sighs> purses, which they got to keep and just loved. Oh, how great. It, this it called a peace bag, and it really touches me. It's made of canvas, simple sewing. But then they wrote, of course, in their language, and then you've translated. Yes, it's just um, four rectangles. The exterior you want to uh, have plainer. I did use mm -hmm. pillow ticking for some. And then an interesting lining. Mm -hmm. And uh, they tuck one rectangle inside the other and bend just, the edges down sure. and put a little ponytail holder sure. in there for the closure. There's no success without patience, no physician like a true friend, no guts, no glory. Very profound things. And you, you can see a picture of the people who have made these, and it's very touching. And t just in closing, tell us how many wells have been dug and a few other things. 88 wells, 33 toilets, 54 piglets and 30 pens, 
and we've put uh, seven youth through college and the Paul de Bruce School for Culinary Arts. We're working in 27 villages, two orphanages, and oh. at the teacher's training school. Well, Pat, thank you for sharing your story with us. It's inspiring. And come back again and tell us how you have progressed. Thank you. I hope that you've enjoyed this inspiring story. You can go to nancyzeman.com, click on Nancy's Corner, and find more about Building Cambodia. And you can also re-watch the show. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now. Nancy has designed templates and written a book that can be used to create designs featured in this program. The templates are $19.99 plus shipping and handling. Book is included free with purchase. To order this reference material, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com 2721. Order item number BK2721. Sew speedy Lone Star quilts, templates, and free book. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyzeman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy. TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs, and Class A Needles. Closed captioning funding provided by Oliso. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.